All right, so this is the beginner's fundamentals video number three. Uh, if you followed the first two videos, you've uh, worked with us on uh, things like touching turns and open and closed uh, thread wraps. Um, and we've just kind of been progressing on how to build a nymph, just a basic nymph. Uh, maybe I should have titled it a little bit different on the fundamentals of building a nymph because there's uh, fundamentals on a lot of things. But, uh, but uh, what we've really covered here is the essence of uh, what it takes to build a fly. And, uh, and, and everything, you, you know, if, you're, if you followed along and you've been kind of working with these techniques, uh, most of these techniques, uh, if not all, are going to transfer into, you know, dang near every other pattern you've ever are ever going to do. So what I so this video what we're going to do uh, is we're going to kind of combine everything that we've done in the first two videos. We're going to add uh, two things, just a tail, uh, and we're going to add some feet. And uh, and this will be kind of the conclusion of like how to build a basic nymph uh, and what a basic nymph looks like. Uh, you know, and maybe we'll do some others in the future. We'll see. So what I've got in the vise is just a size 12 nymph hook. I'm going to use some uni thread 80 in black, or I'm sorry, 60, 60 in black. Uh, we're going to be using some peacock hurl. We're going to be using some dubbing uh, wire and some pheasant tail. And so we'll just kind of get cracking here. It's a long enough intro at almost two minutes. So, uh, same kind of thing. What we're going to do is we're going to start a bodkin width behind the eye, and we're going to put in our jam nut. Uh, in three or four wraps, you should be able to get your thread to just hang there hands free. So, practice that over and over until you get it. Now, uh, I use my bodkin here again because it's about the you know width of an eye, uh, and so what this whole front part is. Uh, it's kind of like the no tie zone, right? Uh, we don't want any any material coming in front of here because uh, this is where we're going to build our head at the very end. So next, with touching turns, just meaning right next to one another, we're going to start wrapping back. And uh, just for practice sake, spin your thread towards the left there, clockwise. I always get confused when I do that. Uh, just to flatten it out and take your time. Uh, the more you do this, the you know, the better you're going to get, right? So we're going to go to about uh, wrap our thread back to about that front third position or halfway, and we'll just trim out our thread or our tag. And we're just going to continue wrapping to the back using touching turns or almost touching turns. And we're going to take this back to the barb, whoop, so that when my thread hangs, it's right there in front of the barb. Next, I'm going to grab my pheasant tail. Uh, you could use turkey. You could use all kinds of other materials. But just for the simplicity of uh, doing these videos, we're going to use the same, same stuff. Uh, and to keep it simple, we're just going to pull out a strand, uh, or uh, some people call it a bunch, but about five strands, four or five strands. And to do that off a of pheasant tail, I'm going to pull all the material off to the side. Sorry, my stem is pretty long here, but kind of 90 degrees like that off to the side and line it up that way so that the tips are all aligned on the outside there. And once I have that and they're all, all those tips are even with each other right here, I'm going to pull the feather away from where I've pinched, not the, not vice versa. So that's my left thumb, left index. I'm not going to move those. I'm going to keep those in place. I'm just going to pull the stem away. And then what that's going to do is it's going to keep your uh, what you're going to use for your tail pretty much lined up. So next for the tail, uh, what we want to do is get a distance. And the distance we want is from behind the eye to about where the thread is. And that's going to be, on average, the distance of the tail of a nymph. So I'm going to pinch them together in my right thumb, right index, all lined up, and just take it till, just like you see it there. I, what I'm doing here is 
with this little kind of uh, valley in my fingers, I'm putting it right on top of that hook eye and taking it to the back. So I'm going to turn it to the side. You can see it just like that. That's, that's how my fingers look on the side. You'll feel the hook eye in there. And I'm going to transfer that and literally to the back. When I say transfer, I'm just going to pull my fingers up and over and slide it down right on top of the thread. Now I've got to switch hands. And so I'm going to take my left thumb, left index, and I'm going to pinch that right down on to the very back part of the shank and or the bend. Just ever so slowly. And I'm just going to do one loose wrap over, two loose wraps over. I can let go, and now that should be pretty much in place. You'll see how my fingers were in the way, and so I've got this little lump in the back here. That's not a problem, uh, especially with a dub body. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to now I'm going to take my third wrap to the back line it up right there and pull down. Now what that's done is is it's locked this material in place. See that tail's not moving? When I'm so when you're using your thread as a center line, do your one wrap over, that's your center line. Do one wrap to your front, make sure everything's lined up. When you do your third, third wrap, towards the back, so you're crossing over your first two wraps, bringing it around and down, and you pull tight, that's going to lock all your material into place. I actually have another video on how to lock your material into place. So what we're going to do is now we're going to take, we want to open our thread up or make it flat. and we're going to start wrapping our thread forward. Now notice right here I jump my thread over that initial bump that we created. If you go straight back on top of it, you're putting more thread on top of the thread you already laid. So just make the jump forward and wrap. Now when you're wrapping your tail in, a lot of the times this material is going to want to shift to one side or the other. The way you can avoid that is, is keeping your pressure down and up. So as you're wrapping underneath where your thread's not touching your material, you have tension up, let go of your tension, loosen it up right here as it comes over. As it crosses over, bring your tension back so you have tension down. Tension all the way up, loosen up, tension down tension, no tension, tension, no tension, tension. And so if you practice that uh, enough, it'll, it, it won't move on you as much. Now it's going to move a little bit and you're going to have to adjust it. And that's, I mean, that's just kind of part of the deal. Uh, but the better you get at it, the less you have to do it. <clears throat> And so what I'll do is I'll kind of, you can kind of see how I'm working that up the whole time. And even then it still moves just ever so slightly. So don't be afraid to maneuver that around. Uh, next one I want to do is I want to stop this about in the third position. And uh, like I kind of talked about on the last video, the third position uh, is right where you see it here. Uh, what's going to go here is our thorax, our head, and our legs are going to come down right here or off to the side. Uh, how you get there from the beginning, uh, watch the other video, uh, and uh, I believe it's the second one, and it'll show you. So we'll trim that out. I just don't want to. I just don't want to rehash too much on the third video, and we can wrap that in with another wrap or so. Next that we have that, what we need to do is we need to add our rib. And I like adding my rib on the bottom side. Uh, it helps keep the fly uh, or the fly's weight uh, distributed a little better. So I'm going to wrap it in on the bottom side. I'll put two or three turns in, kind of turn that to the side. I'm just going to gently pull my wire until it slides underneath 
And now I can keep it on the bottom side. And you can move your wire back and forth like we talked about in the previous video. If you need if you're if you're struggling to keep it underneath. Just got to be careful cuz it can add some little lumps and bumps, but it's not going to be a big deal if you're uh, if we're going to do a dub body. So, and we're going to take it all the way to the very back of the tail. If your tail starts to collapse right here, back off one thread turn put a loop underneath just like so pull it forward and then you can lift that tail if you need to if you don't don't okay so next what we're going to do is we're going to add some dubbing because we're going to have a dubbing body here so we're going to kind of incorporate all the techniques that we've already done and this is going to be one final fly. I'm not going to do it again on a curved hook. Curved hook would be about the same. Um, it's just curved. So again, when you pull out some of your dubbing, pinch, pull. You can kind of see how it starts to go down. Line it back up, pinch, pull, pinch, pull. Each time I'm working down just a little bit. Okay, oh, got a lot there. But what this is doing is it's generally lining up most of these fibers together. And that's that's the easier way to work with your dubbing. Now I want to get my wire out of my way. I'm going to sneak it around under the hook and to the back side. I'm going to turn my vise over. Uh, if you have a rotating vise, uh, it's very beneficial to dub this way. Now I can just literally set that on there and let go. I'm going to lick my fingers. You can use wax here at this point if you want to and wax your thread. And I'm just going to twist, rotating in one direction. So I rotate, lift my fingers off, rotate, lift my fingers off. When this noodle is nice and small, I'm just going to scooch it up to the top and turn my vise back over. And I'm going to put one wrap in, maybe two maybe a second one the whole time adjusting it now what this does is it's locking your dubbing in in place along that shank now if you turn your dubbing over again now since it's locked in you can proceed to work that dubbing down um, the better you get you can work at building a taper with your dubbing if you want so it's all kind of pre-tapered. Nope. Cut my hook point there. And dubbing can be difficult, uh, even for the best tires. Sometimes the dubbing just doesn't want to work. So if it's if you're pulling up and it's loose, just grab it, tighten it, put your finger there, roll it over, tighten it, twist. So don't be. What I'm getting at here is don't be afraid to manhandle the dubbing. Right. See, I've got all, I'm using all loose dubbing there. Okay. Now, you can also just go back and twist it back up. Keep tension on your thread. Nope. I already started working it without being actually attached. <laughs> and you can always go back over what you've already dubbed just a little bit. Now you'll notice I've, I'm keeping all that stuff loose off the back. Okay, that, again, that's so that um, I can easily pull this away if I need to, or I can add more and make it more of a seamless transition. I can dub down as far as I need, pull tight, hold it in place, roll it over, twist. So. Don't be afraid to do all these techniques as you're dubbing uh, until you can just, you know, line up the amount that you need, uh, so on and so forth. And you can just dub a body, you know, and you just kind of start going like that. Uh, don't be afraid to go back over what you've already dubbed. But for what we're doing here, we want just a slight taper, just meaning that we want it a little skinnier in the back and a little thicker in the front. 
And if your dubbing is moving to the back and you want to, you know, you can draw it to the back and make it a little more bushy like that if you need to. That's going to make my fly look weird if I do that though. Uh, now, anyway. And we're just going to keep working that guy forward. That's pretty good. So if your dubbing looks all squiggly and you don't like that, uh, you can come in and trim that out now if you want. You can also just start to uh, wind your uh, rib. And you can, if you bring it towards you, it's going to kind of angle towards the, towards the front. If you take it away from you, it's going to angle towards the rear. Uh, I'm not sure that it really matters either way. Uh, just whichever way is more comfortable to you. You just want to try to keep this even as you go along. If you're having a hard time gauging whether or not this is even, uh, don't be afraid, you know, especially when you're first starting out, to take your bodkin and put it in there and say, hey, is that a bodkin width or uh, a safety pin or whatever your, whatever your tool needs to be to make sure that you're gauging your ribbing accurately. Um, that's one of the biggest things I've seen people struggle with is just putting down even ribbing. Um, and it's just a fundamentals issue, really. Um, or, you know, they just, you know, or they just don't, they know it's not going to matter and they don't care or whatever. But if you're looking to tie nice flies, you, you want to, you want to make it consistent. Okay, so we're going to bring it right up to the front. <clears throat> And since I'm, my thread's already in the advanced spot, I'm going to back it off. And I'm going to tie it off on the underside. I'm doing that just by crossing my thread over the wire, bringing it down, crossing my thread over the wire, bringing it down. Once you've done that three or four times, bring your thread to the front a couple of times, just like so. And Make sure it's tight, or taut, I should say. Tight usually means things are going to break. Uh, and you can helicopter that off. Just like that. That's it. Uh, now for this, all this dubbing that's sitting out front, we got to do something with that. You can cut that off, or you can just lick your fingers, draw it all to the back, and place a couple thread wraps in right there. Right over the back. And our thread's still in the third position. Uh, maybe even a little little forward so we can actually come back just to fuzz. Now when you're doing your rib, you want to have uh, ideally about five turns in there. Uh, four is okay, six is good, five is ideal. Uh, I don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to trim that stuff off. I don't mind it being a little scraggly. but I kind of like it within reason. Uh, and again, it, that's depending on what you're doing and what kind of material you're using. Um, if you're dubbing with some things like squirrel on a jig, yeah, all this stuff that's shooting off every which direction looks really great. If you're tying just like a little basic nymph like we're tying, uh, maybe. Um, maybe it works good for you, you know. But don't be, don't be afraid to try it every which way from Sunday. Uh, so next, what we need to do is go back to our pheasant tail. Because what we're going to do here is we're going to actually add uh, our wing case and our legs at the same time. Uh, and when you're doing that, what you want to do is we're going to pull it off the exact same way. But um, you want to count the number of uh, individual strands of material or barbs coming off the side of the feather. Uh, I think, uh, and from my experience, doing most nymphs on a size 12, I want four on each side. Uh, that gives me some room for breakage. So if one of them breaks, I can snip another one off on the other side, and I can still have an even number. Bugs typically have an even number of legs on both sides. Um, so I'll go four or six, and I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to go two more. And I'm going to 
pull this all off to the side just like so just like I did before I did 90 you get them lined up in your fingers take your time so that all the all the materials lined up There you go. I know that tip looks a little short, but the color changes there. Once they're lined up, just pinch them in place and remove the stem from the barb, not the barbs from the stem. Okay, so now that we have that, what we're going to do is we got to get our next distance, and the distance for this is going to be our feet. This is one of the easiest things to do, and uh, this one tor torments people so badly <laughs> uh, and it doesn't have to so we've just got our bunch they don't have to be uh, the better you get at this you, you want to have them all facing the same direction so it's flat side uh, or concave side versus convex side facing one direction uh, but really you just want them all roughly the same length if they're a little different that's not a big deal but this is where that third part comes into play big time so what we want to do is we want to use where our thread is to the front of the eye to gauge the distance that we need for our legs <coughs> excuse me and I'm a little off there if I got my yeah I do my tweezers right here I'm gonna come in and just gently pull until they're all there sorry if that was off camera gently pull and so you want to line those up just like so We're pretty close now I'm going to take that point and have those hanging off whoop, ha have those hanging off the front just like that and I didn't line those up very well did I mine are kind of shooting all over the place that's all right yours are going to shoot all over the place too I'm kind of doing the whole walking and chewing bubble gum at the same time so good enough what we want that's the that's the distance we want because these are going to be our feet so just like that now what we're going to do is we're going to place them in right there on top of that thread do a loose wrap over you can pull up and a loose wrap over when you do this make your loose wraps over towards the back not the front and now we can, you know, practice our, practice your thread control and work it back slowly. If your stuff's going all haywire like that, uh, a lot of the times what the problem is is all this leftover material that kind of got stripped off the stem. So you can you can trim that off now. You can trim it off beforehand. Yep, oh, didn't tie one in. It got so kerfuffled it didn't even get tied in. I guess I don't really need it, but all right. And now we're going to work our way back uh, just past the third point so that we still have five ribs showing. And so that that fifth rib, if you can manage, is showing all the way around until it gets back to the bottom side. Just like that. I have to back that off the thread or turn. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, so next, back to the peacock curl that we've done in the other videos. And you want to just, you know, kind of gauge what it is you're looking for, the look that you're wanting from the individual strands. So you can pull a few out. Uh, what we're looking, here, uh, looking for here as far as number-wise is uh, three to five. Uh, if you tend to break peacock curl, go five. Um, you know, that's just that's the way I kind of gauge it. Put a little extra in, so if you break one, then you've got an extra. Let's see, what I got there three. Oop, dropped it. Okay, so I got four there. I didn't like the other ones. 
Okay. And we're going to line these up tip side. So all the tips are lined up. Like so. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to come in. We're going to trim out about an inch and a half to two inches of that peacock curl. We're going to tie this in so that the tips are facing down. And we're just going to put a loose wrap over, or maybe two. And I kind of draw mine up just a fuzz. And I'm going to work my thread very slowly, trying to keep this all even. Once I have three or four wraps in, before I do something crazy and tie it in where it's going to block the eye, I'm going to trim these out. And then I will proceed. Whoop. Oh, my thread got loose there. Oh, that'll happen too. Oh. I'll proceed to move forward. See, I'm already into my no tie zone that I was talking about. See how easy that is to do? It takes a little practice. And you're going to slip up. Don't worry about it. Next, I'm going to rotate these in my fingers. You can also get some hackle pliers and rotate them. We want to get about an inch or so. And I'm going to have to do it. My, my fingers are so dry from work that just the grip on anything is just nil. Uh, so we're going to rotate this. There we go. And, what, and you can kind of see it twisting into a rope. That's just going to reinforce your peacock curl. All right. And now to build the bulk, I'm going to take it back. Uh, some people will tie this in up front and work it back. Typically, a thorax is going to be a little bit bigger. So I'll, what I do... Uh, and it's not everybody. I, I start it at the back, I work it forward, I reverse the material, work it to the back, and then that's gonna build up the bulk that I need. Um, those are techniques that you can play around with though. Which way you like to do it. Next, I'm gonna start wrapping it. Whoop. And as I come around, I'm gonna, whoop, trying to get my little brush here. I didn't brush it out, so it's not all sticking out, all purdy. And we're not going to need much here. Just a couple of wraps, really. As it comes around, make sure you twist. Give it a little more twist to it. Make sure your twist goes the same direction. just like so. Next is the tricky part because you're running out of real estate quick, right? Oh, my thorax slip. There we go. There we go. Because we still have to have that head. You can undo your thread or do a, a rev uh, yeah, undo one wrap. There we go. That's what I was <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. Sometimes I get tongue-tied in what I'm trying to say. And we'll just take it over a couple of times, and now we'll, we'll put the thread in the front. A few wraps. I've only got like four wraps in there. And that should be good enough to hold all this. Okay. And I'm going to work my thread just to the back to make sure I still have my head in place. Uh, next, what you want to do is just try to divide these out, these legs. If there are different lengths, that's okay. Mine are different lengths here. You may have wrapped some in. I wrapped some in there. That's no big deal. It's really not. But we're going we're gonna to make some legs out of this. Uh, and it takes a little practice. But what we're going to do is we're going to take our bodkin. And if you have a hole in the back of your bodkin, even better. If not, you can lick your fingers 
and draw them back to the sides like so. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult, but if you just take your bodkin and push them back to the side, you put a couple wraps in, and now you've got these legs that are sticking out the side. These are by far not the best legs I've done. But, you know what? It is what it is, right? You still got some legs out there. It's a little difficult with pheasant tail. If you learn how to master that, um, you know, you're in good shape. Next, we're just going to draw all of our pheasant tail together. Uh, you can lick it together to get it to stay together, like so. Uh, you could add wax if you needed to. And we're just going to bring our wing case. This is going to be our wing case. We're going to bring it right on over the top. I'm going to put like two wraps in. I'm going to fold the material of the pheasant tail over. I'm going to start wrapping to the back. Nope. Now this is the part where you want to place your thread wraps carefully. Right? You don't want to crowd the eye, but you want everything tied in. So what I typically try to do is build my little head here. Again, not the nicest head I've made, but it is what it is. It's something that'll totally fish. Uh, if you're going to put it in a shadow box and take a picture, uh, practice it a couple times. Uh, but then I can go ahead and go and clip all that out. <laughs> and next for the whip finish. Um, by this point, you really want to know how to use a whip finish. Um, if you haven't practiced, practice on an empty hook, a blank hook. Just practice over and over. And we're going to put in, I'm going to put in uh, four turns. I'm going to pull tight. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put in another four. Sorry, I've got some other material that's like dragging off of my thread and fingers from other flies that I've been tying. Whoop, sorry, just like that. Now, so you can see my legs kind of got cut off on this side a little bit. I still have some of them sticking out a little bit, or at least it looks like legs right there. Could be dubbing. Um, so, is it the best nymph I've ever tied? Nope. Sure isn't. Is it fishable? Yep. Absolutely. And I imagine you're somewhere right in that boat. Again, these, these videos are kind of to be a guide um, on some techniques that you can practice over and over just to build a basic nymph and so without the pheasant tail body you just made a pheasant tail nymph with the brown dubbing it looks like a pheasant tail uh, but again you can use uh, whatever uh, these videos are really meant to be about the building blocks for a nymph, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be pretty. Uh, this fishes. Uh, matter of fact, if you don't even like it, just come in here and trim that out. Well, I've only got the one leg left. I didn't do my legs right. Trim it out. You trim that out and you take a picture of that and you post it somewhere. Uh, it's gonna look like you, you know, you you tied a perfect bug, and no one will ever know that you were, uh, that your legs didn't come out quite right. So don't get all, yeah, uh, you know, don't get all worried about that or whatever. Uh, you know, just practice. That's what this is for. Uh, if you wanted to do a bubble back, we'll do that real quick uh, before we end this video. You can take something like Solares and just do this right over the wing case and down onto the back a little bit. If you do that, flip your fly over. Where's my light? Everybody likes UV resin. Uh, and the reason you flip it over is so that it doesn't, uh, that resin doesn't draw into all the other material. 
uh, and you want this material free as free flowing as possible. And there you go. Now there's a little bubble back to it, um, and that's totally optional. But a lot of people like using UVs, and uh, it protects your wing case, and it gives a little, just a little extra uh, dimension to your fly. So. Uh, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the last three videos. It's been kind of like a workshop deal. I know they're a little lengthy. I know they're a little long. Um, they're, they're really meant for you to be able to work with slowly, uh, just to build on some of your fundamentals on how to build a fly, uh, a nymph in particular. Um, and uh, I really hope that, uh, you know, some of these things have worked out for you or you found something that, uh, you know, maybe I was doing that you weren't doing. Uh, by no means is, is this the only way. Um, this just kind of covers uh, the basic uh, ways, the beginner ways of uh, techniques that uh, you're going you're gonna to find that are duplicated over and over and over in numerous flies. Uh, whether that's dry flies, nymphs. Um, you know, all your basic trout bugs are going to duplicate these kind of uh, uh, techniques over and over and over. So um, these are definitely the basic techniques. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe and share. Always appreciate when you do that. Uh, and if you have found this video uh, and you're not a part of our Facebook group, Fly Tying for Beginners, uh, we'd be happy to have you over there. Uh, we do some fun stuff. We got some. Uh, we got an international fly swap. We do classes. We do uh, a weekly challenge, uh, or bi-weekly challenge, I should say. Um, and so, yeah, we just kind of do some fun stuff. There's a great group of people over there. So, uh, other than that, happy tying, everybody, and uh, keep tying. It's fun. We'll see you later.